Mark is it with me in studio tonight. Mark, how are you doing? Good evening. Yes. Uh, <laughs> good to be here. Annoyed that we're, uh, the computer won't play our intro at the moment. But other than that, very well, thank you. We're working on that. We're working <laughs> on that. Yeah, probably next week we'll have that going again. Uh, with us tonight, our special guest is uh, UFO filmmaker Patty Greer. Patty, it's really wonderful to have you. Thank you for joining us tonight. Patty, are you on mute? <laughs> <laughs> I'm there not pushing the mute button. <laughs> <laughs> there she is. Hi. Uh, nice start. I'm yakking away with the mute on. <laughs> oh, that's all right. That's all right. <laughs> I guess I am. I was being shy there for a moment. Oh, are you always that bashful? <laughs> I think it's nice to have a new audience. Thank you for the even invitation. You're very, very welcome. So now, were you guys, were either of you guys affected at all by that massive cyber attack that happened today? There was like, uh, oh, all the big, all the big, big websites were affected, like Twitter and Spotify. And uh, I think, um, what what other ones were there? There were a few others that were pretty big. I think SoundCloud also was hacked. It's like, I guess a lot of them went down. Um, Netflix was down. And of course, people lost their minds. <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I was just uh, alerted to the fact that certain cities down the East Coast just lost their Internet, which is uh, wow. fresh news recent. So, yeah, you know, we're being played with. Um, mm -hmm. And it's interesting you would begin the show with that. I was wondering how long I could keep my foot in my mouth. But um, <laughs> no, speak freely. I've made eight films. I've just has so much fun doing it and being yeah. in more than 100 crop circles and meeting incredible people inside the crop circles and then going through all the magical experiences that created these movies mm -hmm. is just ecstatic and wonderful and yeah. here I am a woman and I'm straight up with people my problem is I have zero tolerance for people being dishonest and mm -hmm. in the film business, uh, I haven't met any one good person yet in the <laughs> industry. Right. And I made a few people mad, I guess. Really? By, well, yeah, I guess so. Uh, I'm being, I, I guess I'm very clearly known as the most hacked UFO filmmaker ever. That is, uh, wow. Crazy. Well, I, it must mean that you're close to the truth. Oh, my first movie, I nailed it. Wow. And, um... The interesting parallel is that what I found in my first movie and why I even made it was completely, um, I'm not supposed to say this out loud, but I called myself the accidental filmmaker for years because I had no training. None mm -hmm. of this was a plan. And I was dealing with mercury poisoning from a dentist, a total oh, surprise wow shock in my life and after years of trying every kind of remedy I was desperate enough to do something completely off the wall and go to England and lay in a crop circle oh my gosh oh it, my god right what happened well I mean I, I couldn't even tell anyone you know that I knew I was like uh, I'll be <sighs> back I took I took one of my daughters and we went over there and when I walked into the first crop circle it was the biggest woe. And it was um, Mark, it was uh, near Avebury where Mark has also been in a crop circle. And Avebury happens to be the epicenter of crop circle deliveries in the world. What? Did you know that, Mark? Yep. 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 I got my eye on that place. <laughs> right. And people really underestimate the Avebury Stone Circle. Uh, everybody knows Stonehenge, very famous, right. photos everywhere, you can close your eyes and see it, but even larger and older is the Avebury Stone Circle, which is the epicenter. When you look at a map at the end of every summer, mm -hmm. we had a research center until this year, and he had a map on the wall with a red push pin. Every location of a crop circle, there was a push pin on the map. So we'd get up, you know, in the morning, go to the research center, and um, we'd whisper, oh, there's a new one over in West Kennet Longbarrow, and we'd all fly away and, you know, and meet and 
go walk up the hill and find the crop circle in the middle of these huge farm fields in the middle of nowhere. But there's always sacred sites. And there's always these tram lines where the tractors have to go down through the field to water the plants. There's always the wheels of the watering machines, at least. So mm -hmm. you walk into these tram lines and it's always almost you want to be the first one. But it's nice when you see just one bobbing head way over there in the wheat. So you kind of <laughs> you're headed in the right direction because it's it's long and flat and you walk a long ways before you find them. But the interesting thing about the very first one that got me hooked forever was that all of a sudden, as I'm walking down this tram line with a lady who I'd never met, who's still a very dear friend, mm -hmm. uh, turns out she's the archdruidess of Stonehenge for decades. Wow. Victoria Marsden. Um, yeah, actually, we had a communication just today. Oh, my goodness. Uh, so I meet her off the wall. We go to our first crop circle, hers also, even though she lives over there in Glastonbury. I'm there with my daughter. It's rainy cold, uh, but they said, oh, yes, follow us. We're going over to a crop circle tomorrow morning. So my daughter and I in our rental car, you know, wrong side of the road, wrong mm -hmm. side of the car. It's like, okay, we'll follow them. We can do this. So we chased them down all these roads, and they've got this little car with two huge Great Danes in the back and stuffed in the back window is a string harp, like a little oh, wow. mini harp that I guess they were going to bring to the crop circle. But it was so wet and chilly that um, they barely kept the dogs out. But one lady stayed with the dogs in the car and my daughter and I and this lady named Victoria, who turned out to be, you know, who she is, uh, go into this tram lines and we walk way in and all of a sudden the hair went up on my arms and I had chills head to toe and it was tingles and I, I, I was stopped and I turned around and looked at my daughter and her eyes were really big and she goes, yeah, uh-huh, I feel something. And then I look wow. back at Victoria following us in the tram line and she's just nodding with big eyes. <laughs> so sure enough, 10, 20 feet, we get to this swirl down circle of weed. It was just meticulous. The walls were just uh, straight and uh, precise. It was immaculate. And it looked like it was just swirl down in one motion, uh, like something had done it um, very quickly and in one movement. And if humans do it with boards and ropes, it's easy to see because every three feet they have to step down on the board again and then they lift it up and two or three feet they step down on the board again. So when you first go into a crop circle, you get down on your hands and knees and if every two or three feet there's a line of broken wheat, it's easy to tell. Yeah, humans made it with boards and ropes and so we know that that's right. part. But if you don't see that at all, then you step carefully and go and explore. And if you don't see where the weed is bent and tipped over is broken, then you kind of take your time and examine the fact that where it is bent, something hit one or two acres of wheat and told it to go left here, right there, 90 degrees there, 35 degrees here, and the field just obeyed. Mm. And all these bends are meticulous. How does this happen? And then you, so it turns out scientifically that what is going on is that if they're not done with boards and ropes, you look at where they're bent and there's these very interesting anomalous changes that are consistent in most of the real crop circles, which is a surprisingly high number of them that were tested in the lab by the great scientist William Lovengood and his partner, Penny Kelly. Mm -hmm. They did their work in the 80s and 90s. And um, into this century, they worked really dil diligently on crop circle research. But he had a hard time getting published. And frankly, the scientific community blackballed him. His research was so important. What they discovered about crop circles was so important that... They actually went way out of their way to make sure he didn't get a Ph.D. and to somehow publicly disqualify him. It worked. It worked so well what these 
uh, I'm going to say low frequency beings mm -hmm. did to William Levengood and his research that until I came along, get back um, and made this new movie, Crop Circle Diaries, uh, he's been missing. What? But the interesting thing was he died in 2013 and appeared again in 2014 in the strangest way and brought me together on a physical three-dimensional level with Penny Kelly in the middle of nowhere. It was way too weird. And people saw him. What? Tall pants, silver hair, silver goatee. Who is that? He has a message. He orchestrated this, and he's really glad it worked. And I'm like, what? I, I had no idea. But he had actually oh shown gosh. up from the other side to introduce me to Penny Kelly, who had worked with him in the lab. She knew everything. And so I created a movie with her. It, within the next three months, it was finished. Wow. And, um, it just played on Colorado, Denver, PBS 12. Um, and millions of people saw the movie. And um, unfortunately, uh, I'm not going to say unfortunately anything. Millions of people saw it, period. And Dang, I mean, I just feel like I'm always climbing over a wall because I'm tolerating hacking at a level mm. you would not believe, Lenita. You know, I have to wonder about, you know, why you're being targeted the way you are. You know, we've been seeing a, 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 such a huge increase in um, an attack on people who are digging deep into the UFO phenomenon, into the crop circle phenomenon, into paranormal phenomenon. And I mean... If the hacking is all that happens, we'll be lucky because, I mean, how did how did your associate die, the researcher? Yeah, really. Because we've seen lots of UFO researchers passing away recently under mysterious circumstances. And so it's a little bit of a scary time to be revealing the truth right now because they seem to be getting a lot bolder about trying to shut us up, so to speak. And so it's a little bit of a scary time, honestly. Uh you haven't um you haven't like gotten any like actual threats have you i think i need to stop you from saying it cuz the energy of all that is something that doesn't exist in my world good I okay have good such protection that that's not a conversation i'm ever willing to have good. sorry to interrupt you but you can understand why i'm just yes yes i draw the line you know i'm a warrior i'm surrounded by troops and I also, in the third dimension, work with really important people. And what I'm dealing with now is, um, some people would call it, oh my God, I call it evidence. I call it blatant, mm -hmm. unconscious behavior that just continues to give us physical evidence of uh, people acting extremely badly. And I think that we're moving into a time which is, a conversation that I am so excited to have where the good movies, the honest things like yes. the movies that I have put out are going to be um, programs given to schools, libraries, colleges, Wonderful. kids, you know, uh, where all these beautiful pictures of wheat in a field lay down in sacred geometry mm -hmm. and everybody's going, wow, look at that mandala. Wow, look at that sacred <laughs> geometric crop circle. And then Patty Greer goes, yeah, well, let's print it. Okay, now we've got 20 of them. And let's stick a pin in them, okay, and spin it. So you start to spin a bunch of crop circles and all of a sudden you see these mandalas turn into propulsion. And then wow. you see the next one, and it's a friggin' propulsion device. And you're looking at it, and dang, all many of them. I think we spun a lot of them in Crop Circle Diaries in a black and white video. Actually, it was done by this amazing guy in Holland, um, whose name I'm only allowed to say, R71. Okay. <laughs> He's a very curious fellow, but he spins <laughs> crop circles in ways that just we would never realize what they're saying. So I'm saying this to all of you and your audience because you start doing this, you're going to be blown away. Uh, frankly, Crop Circle Diaries really shows a lot of what the messages are. It's and that, that's, I think, everybody's biggest question. Yeah? You know, what, what these messages are that's coming through and what is the purpose for them? What are they trying to say? What is their meaning? You know, is there a deeper purpose to them? And is it understood? 
yes, 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 and yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, so all of them are speaking different uh, answers and asking us to look at different things. Um, and again, I'm going to refer to this as my eighth movie, and it also is me and Penny Kelly. And we take turns between the science, the real science, and then me admitting, knowing my family's going to probably see the truth of these bizarre things that have happened to me in crop circles, or where all of a sudden I have an epiphany, epiphany? Um, <laughs> after looking at thousands of them through the libraries of different people to create what I wanted for my movies, um, it's almost like going shopping in a huge store of gorgeous things to choose from crop circle pictures just you know to tell a story and there's probably 30,000 crop circles that have been documented since the 80s that's insane number i mean i don't think anybody's i don't think most people are aware of just how many there are and now is it kind of centralized in a certain area because you don't really hear about them in the united states very often Australia just had its first one. Wow. Brazil had one about a month ago. England always has the most. And I shouldn't say always, but to the best of my knowledge, the last probably 25 years, 80s, 90s, probably 30 years, England has had probably 50% of the overall number of documented crop circles. But that's a big word, documented, because right. I can't even imagine how many more are dropped somewhere on the planet that nobody noticed. Yeah. They're only noticed if somebody flies over them or drives by them or takes their tractor into the field and has the shock of their day and <laughs> finds a crop circle in their field. But, Lenita, when I tell you the hair stood up on my arms, um, Mark, did you feel that electromagnetic energy? Did you feel that different field when you went in? <laughs> Um, well, yes, I think to a degree, I, 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 I know what you're, where you're coming from, definitely. But, uh, yeah, yeah, you, there was definitely a, uh, uh, an energy there, a unique one, definitely. Now, how long ago was that, that you, uh, that you visited that crop circle, Mark? Well, I'm just looking on Google to try and find which one it was, because okay. at, as you said, I think it was in 2011 that I went. And oh. I, kept, I kept a piece of it in my flat until about three or four weeks ago. <laughs> and then, you <laughs> just... I finally decided to throw it away. Wow. Yeah, I, I kept a piece of the corn because it was, it was a very intriguing experience. Obviously, yeah. it meant something very special to you for you to keep a piece of it. <laughs> well, Yes, but I felt maybe I was doing the wrong thing by taking something. <laughs> well, I, I can understand that viewpoint, too, I suppose. So do you want to hear the punchline of the research? Um, and then I'll work my way yeah. backward, because in case we do have a power outage, if somebody plays games, I want your mm. audience to know how the heck these things are happening yes. and why. Yeah. Um, we've we you know it's pretty much like everything else i don't even want to go to how they got away with tricking us so long but it doesn't matter they haven't been able to stop them they haven't been able to that's the main thing control them explain them and uh so penny kelly get the girls together watch out right lenita you know and um we were sitting around a bowl of cherries. That's all it takes for girls, you know, some good to eat <laughs> and, and her scientific wisdom. And also, Penny wasn't the scientist. Penny actually worked in the lab with William Levengood for the last 16 years of his life, and he left in 2013. I think he was so fed up with the humans and how they were acting when he really had brought something so important for decades. He worked with seeds and plants. And he worked with magnets, and uh, he had tremendous um, connection, I do believe, with other dimensional entities. And, and Penny has written eight books, pennykelly.com, uh, and her books are on consciousness. Oh, and nice. So her first book was on Kundalini, and she just is off-the-wall brilliant. And her other books, again, are Consciousness 1, 2, and 3. But one 
is with Levengood. So uh, they wrote a book together, and that's how they met, was that he was so intrigued by her Kundalini experience, and he was looking for people with different energies so he invited her to come work, and she had to drive across the state of Michigan. I mean, they are opposite sides uh, to go to work with him. But she went three days a week for 16 years before he passed. And they discovered that the seeds inside crop circles, and it was only by accident that they got lost on his desk, if they sit for six to eight weeks like go to sleep, shrivel up, they look like you may as well throw them away. But a little voice said, stick them in germination paper and stick them in the germination tank. And so he put them in there and to, to their major surprise, they found after numerous times of testing that the seeds inside crop circles, if you let them take a nap for six to eight weeks, will grow 30 to 400% more crop with up to 75% more nutrition per plant. That's insane. I mean, that's just, that's crazy. I mean, that's wild, but wow. I mean, okay, what can that mean, though? I mean, are they... Mm. That can mean that when you get brilliant people together that re-engineer these spinning frequencies of plasma that are creating crop circles in seconds... Oh then you can realize that what we're working with is plasma. And what we're working with is different frequencies spinning into these fields that somehow, and I'm not the physicist or the scientist, <laughs> but I listen to Penny and verbatim, it's pretty close to, this is the big one, Crop circles are coming out of the earth initially. They are not coming out of the sky. Oh, wow. Now, oh, my goodness. I mean, how do you visualize that happening? How, well, how do you? They, they further than visualized it. Somehow they scientifically proved it. And then I saw it happening, um, which I'll get to in a second. Okay. But through their testing of uh, all the different distances from the center of where the crop circle centered, uh, basically that dot in the middle, and then everything swirls down from that center. Um, they measured how, uh, the frequencies 5 feet out, 10 feet out, 15 feet out, end of formation, and then outside the field. And so they found that when plasma is spinning, a vortex of plasma coming out of the earth, they found that they came out in pairs. So what you have is pairs of counter-rotating vortices, two spinning plasma tornadoes, opposite directions, right there near each other. And depending on what those frequencies are, they're going to lay the field down in different ways. So, number one, almost all crop circles come out of the earth in these mm -hmm. counter rotating vortices. Number two, sometimes there are extraterrestrial frequencies added in, and those are the ones where you walk in, in my opinion. All I have is my opinion here, and I'm not anything more than just me. I've been in more than 100 crop circles, so I feel I can say some things, <laughs> but it's only my perception I have here. So yeah. who the heck knows? I mean, don't you both wonder sometimes like, wait a minute, is my life real or is there like something far more real outside me? Oh, gosh. Yeah, definitely. So I, that kind of um, kind of goes along what you were saying about your friend's book on consciousness. Um, I, I'm curious on how she um, and why she was, you know, pulling research from crop circles in regards to consciousness and what the connection was she's trying to make there. Okay. Great timing for that question. You nailed it. <laughs> yeah. So I mentioned that there's always the mother sending these messages up in two spinning little tornadoes. Mm -hmm. And I call the earth the mother. I do too. She's a living entity yes. and she breathes. Yes. And here we are, the humans, yep. 
uh, drilling into her, sucking at her blood, drilling oh. in some more, shaking her to death. And I think she's been very, very patient. So she's sending out these messages, in my opinion, for all over the planet. No, we are definitely in England getting 50% of the documented ones, but they've been documented everywhere on every continent and lots of them. Lots of them, an average of 150 to 75 a year. It was about 175 for the years I was going. I started in 2006, went back in 2007 and eight for nine weeks by myself. I was relentless and ridiculous, but I filmed <laughs> four movies and I made four movies by myself in two years completely had no life other than um, being completely amazed, barely sleeping because they'd usually give me all this data at three in the morning. I'd wake up with notes and uh, get to work. And I was always in the right place at the right time. It was so easy making these movies and they're just totally organic. I'm a one girl team and I'm laughing because when these snooty high funded filmmakers with 80 people on their team um they feel like you know i'm not hd enough or whatever it's like yeah well it's just me <laughs> on my own i can barely carry my gear you know i've got an old school big camera and yeah you know you can't please everyone though because if you have a big fancy camera that's worth a lot of money and you get really high quality video then they're going to they're just going to say you know what you've got is cgi or that you've done something to it you just can't please everybody because there's always going to be people that are going to complain about something it's just kind of the nature of the beast especially when you're researching in a field that gets so much criticism i think some of it is actually misunderstanding some of it's out of fear but some of it is also um people trying to silence the information from coming out and so they appear like a general person when they're actually probably um you know officially there in, in you know they've been paid to do what they do yeah. Well, um, so the amazing thing, though, about this was what you just heard was that it's growing 30 to 400 percent more food with up to 75 yes. percent more nutrition per plant. To me, I think this is about the most important thing I've ever learned about crop circles. And I think it's extremely important when we're going to have to bring back our food supply once we yeah. get this, shall we say, problem we're tolerating which just boggles my mind that we're even letting this happen. I don't know how these companies got mm. this far, but um, my money, big money and corruption in politics. Well, it, it's pretty shocking. So here I am. I'm just a girl, mm. but I do make very honest movies. And um, the, the, the thing that took my breath away and made me glad that we weren't on camera today is that two days ago, my friend, Victoria, the arch mm -hmm. Stonehenge, sends me a, um, a text. Uh, and she says, oh, yeah, I see your music's available in England on Amazon.com. And I was like, what? <laughs> wow. So I went and I realized that Amazon.com has half a dozen of my items for sale, not by me, items that nobody has the right to sell. And then I went further on Amazon and I found that I've already been dealing with it in America. There is a company with 213,000 fake listings that are hacking eight of mine. And I've mm. been dealing with Amazon, every aspect of them for six months. They pulled two, but kept seven up or six up. And one just got added. So I went to France. Oh, my God, there's 11 illegal listings of my films. Yes, this is yesterday. I went to Italy, two stolen products. Japan, eight stolen products. Spain, four stolen products. Canada, are you kidding me, 12? Wow. And all of the companies that are selling them, I think, are professional hacking groups. And they've got... Um, they're all LLCs, and one of them, the storefront, the Blue Sky, has eight hundred, almost a, almost nine hundred thousand listings on Amazon in Canada. Wow. The next guy has a million one hundred thirty. So I go and look at these listings, and they all have five star ratings. This is so organized. 
And that's just this week's hack, Lenita. Wow. wow. I tolerated them breaking into everything, and I'm pretty smart, but I'm dealing with like high school bullies with tons of money, paying people mm -hmm. really a lot to just be bad. Mm -hmm. I can tell they, it, it can't be these old guys. They're paying people to be bad. I personally honestly feel it's not just some random kids. I, it might be, um, you know, some of the shady companies that like to um, exploit and resell things, you know. Um, but I, I got a really strong feeling that there's 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 elements of the government in that, um, because if it was if it wasn't my my um, my biggest concern is that Amazon's not doing a lot about it. And the only reason I would see for them to ignore it is if it was coming from an official agency that's just trying to cause problems for your information to get out there. So they they try to resell it themselves and they raise the prices to astronomical levels because that's been happening, right? They've been raising your prices or at least the ones they're selling so it looks like your product is super expensive. There you go. Yeah. It's not about selling them. It's about distracting people away yes. from buying them for me. And when they do all the items, it's very intentional. They mm -hmm. falsified the titles to be insulting. On the other hand, they also named people in my films that are very famous, Laura Eisenhower. Mm -hmm. So my movie, Women of Today, they titled theirs, Women of Today by Laura Eisenhower. <laughs> my collection of 10 movies, uh, movies and soundtracks that won all these awards, they titled it Crop Circle Wisdom by Sasha Stone. So it's, it's plagiarism. It's, a nuisance. it's this ridiculous nuisance that I've had to pay for telling the truth. Mm -hmm. And their first message to me was very interesting in 2013, the first time I was on PBS. And I will say I've been my films have been airing on PBS three different times, which I'm just delighted so it's many wonderful. people get to see them. Yes. And uh, when everything changes and the money is flowing in the right places, I really can't wait to give all my work away. I just, I'm so excited for kids to be able to be told our real history and uh, yeah. to see us move into a time of true freedom where all this uh, Federal Reserve and all this crap that's fake news just goes away. Yeah, me too. Me too. Um, Do you see that, that? Yeah. Well, I, you know, it would almost be, you know, not so bad if it was being spread, you know, like, um, oh, what am I trying to think of? You know, there, there, um, oh shoot. You know, when people have like bad films that they, the, the bad copies, like they take a camera in a theater, like in that case, it's being spread for free. At least your information would be getting out there you know, and people would be receiving it, but that's not what's happening. Somebody's just taking your work, putting someone else's name on it, selling it at an elevated price, and just, it's just horrible. Well, it's direct theft. It's international theft. It it's, is. It's copyright infringement. It's so many things, but it's like the fifth thing they've done. I know who it is. I know who it is. And uh, they're laughing because it's, again, I, I, you know, to me, it's so below us. So let's carry on about the crop circle science. But yes. I did want to say that um, because I'm really, truly working with a very amazing group in the in uh, the new military, I will say. And I do believe that America is saved. I do believe that we are already in a in a really good way. And I think that our news is just a pile of lies. And very soon when it gets denounced that America is perhaps uh, going back to you, honoring the Constitution and all those things that, you know, we promised each other yes. that we would honor thy neighbor in all ways. Um, I think it's going to be a surprising shock how good things are going to be when the big potty is flushed. And it is in progress. A lot of people, and we're not hearing about it, have been removed from the planet or um, arrested or given an option. And I think big names that have done a lot of bad to the planet have already been put in this special place way out in the desert. And all of them, all those bad families, had a choice. 
And I think they've they've either chosen amnesty way out there in the middle of nowhere and they don't get to come back and they don't get to communicate outside. And they're with all those other icky people that have destroyed the planet. But or um, they comply and complying means they get to be there. Otherwise, they are removed. I somehow think that truly we have had a major clearing going on for the last few years that's not being talked about. But I see us being free, and I see us being very, very abundant and uh, surprised at how good it is here because Jim Mars, have you ever interviewed him? I haven't yet. I want to. I met him and his wife at the UFO conference at the Ozark Mountain one this year, um, but I didn't get to talk to him for a long time, and we have not had an, an interview on the show yet, but I really, really want to, yeah. He's amazing. <laughs> yeah. He's amazing. Well, um, I think he knows a very interesting piece of our history. And I'm educating him on all this weird stuff because um, we are living in a time where, like I was saying, sometimes I wonder, my God, am I like out here on a limb? And I <laughs> I do intentionally live away from people. Um, I'm having a quiet chapter because I do have contact and I do... Um, like living in a different frequency. Yeah. So these crop circles, I was, and we were going into the consciousness piece. So yeah. some of them are extremely buzzy, really high frequency that Mark had also experienced. I feel that in most of them, but when I don't, I immediately look down and sure enough, every three feet, there's boards and ropes and you can see the broken wheat. If it's not broken, and we were going to go into that, <clears throat> what you find are these anomalous bends. And it means unpredictable, unexpected. What happened was something hit the wheat and created a very, very high heat. And wheat, corn, barley, oats, canola, whatever the field is, the plant is actually cellulose. Penny explains it this way, that cellulose is plastic. And it's got liquid inside. The life that keeps it alive is that liquid that goes up and down the stem and uh, it's like our blood. And mm -hmm. what happens is that it boils. It gets really hot. And where these bends are in the plant as it grows, you know, every five or eight inches, it has like an elbow, a node, they explode. And some of them just grow a bubble. Some of them extend called elongated node. And some of them have an expulsion cavity where it just spits out the steam and it just blows out a hole. And you can see almost a burned area in some of them. So there's physical evidence in the real crop circles at the bend of the nodes. Mm -hmm. uh, some of them are just bubble and bent and they stay, stay green and lovely, most of them. But every now and then you get some really weird ones where they curl the leaves up on the top. So we know that something is heating an yeah. acre and a half at a time. I mean, wow. this is absolutely incredible. So when we go into the crop circle the next day, day after, a few days later, you can still feel that buzz. It is strong, that electromagnetic spinning mm -hmm. field. It doesn't feel spinning, but you can feel the elevated frequency. Frequency, yeah. So a lot of those, when they're really strong, my perception is those are probably ET influenced with the earth. Right. energies and i walked into a crop circle where i took sasha stone and uh, i had a film crew and a drone and it was just this beautiful day unbelievable formation oh my god it was incredible really complicated and i saw photos from the air so we drove three hours to get there uh -huh. and um so I take Sasha in and I walked in first with a camera guy and he had never been in a crop circle. So for him, his eyes were just like saucers <laughs> and um, there was no buzz. Oh, there was no tingle. And I was like, oh, no, oh, is no. it because I'm directing? Is it because I'm producing? Uh, OK, come on, feel, feel, girl. And I never have to think. Yeah. You know, it's always like autopilot and I couldn't feel a darn thing. So I bring Sasha in once we get the gear going and we start rolling cameras and he and I are in the back of the circle and these five women are sitting there along the back of the circle and they were like, yeah, yeah, sure. Cool. So we started filming and 
uh, Sasha and I agreed. I said, you know, I, I got to be honest, I'm not feeling anything, but there's something about this formation. It's just so, the pattern is so immense and interesting and intricate. So the women are just watching us and smiling. And Sasha says, yeah, you know, I was expected to feel something, but got to be honest, I, I feel like it was human made. And I said, yeah, I, I got to agree. But, you know, the thing about crop circles, which I forgot to mention, 96 or 7 percent of crop circles and this is probably, you know, six years ago, eight years ago when I was studying data, we realized that almost all of them are sitting over an aquifer or a body of water. So water is an element that's below almost every crop circle. That's the other interesting. Common, yeah. And the other common one is that they're always sitting on a ley line between two sacred sites. Really? Mm-hmm. So we're standing in this crop circle, and we know that southern England, this epicenter area, but we're on the edge of it three hours north, and uh, but it's sitting over, you know, all the water because it's the island of England. It's not an island, but right. there's it's the biggest salt aquifer in the world is under the Avebury area. I don't know <laughs> about Dorset where we were, but there we are, and I'm pointing, and I said, well, there's a, there's a sacred site up there. You can see the hill fort. And I look straight on the other side of me, and I'm pointing to the other hill fort. And I'm like, okay, so we are on a ley line, and we are over water. Hmm. Okay, so then we ended this the thing, and I looked at the women, and I said, what do you ladies think about this crop circle? And the, the lady with the long silver braid, the mom said, yeah, we have something to say. And I said, do you mind going on camera? So we shot the camera on him. And she says, this is our crop circle. And we are the QEG, Quantum Energy Generator Free Energy Group. And we were meditating with our technical team in the Avebury Stone Circle yesterday, asking for a confirmation that our free energy device was going to work. She holds up a photo of their device, and they held up a photo from the air of the crop circle Girl, it was the same schematic. So, what we have there is a crop circle that was created by human consciousness and the earth. Wow. <laughs> That's absolutely just devastatingly just amazing. I can't even. That's wow. Wow. <laughs> I said we're going to hit the dessert. First, in case there's a power out. Mark, you following this? What do you think? <laughs> yeah, I am following. I'm following. I'm trying to make sense of it all. Uh, I think that's cool that you say you feel uh, things in some of them and not in the others. And the one you just mentioned, uh, that's a very interesting outcome. Mm -hmm. uh, I was just, I was just going to ask, do you consider then, because as when I visited one and the crop, was sort of bent at the nodes. That to me was enough to say, well, this is just pure odd. It couldn't be done with boards and things like that. Uh, right. Will you say? Would you say that is a feature of the ones where you also feel this uh, energy, and and at a crop circle where you don't feel it, do they lack this element, physical element, or or is there a mix? What I learned shocked me. That even humans can make real crop circles. I believe that these people, the QEG team, put out the energy <clears throat> sitting on an earth in a sacred site. Now, the Avery Stone Circle is not only older than Stonehenge, larger than Stonehenge. It's also sitting in this, in, it's this huge stone circle where three underground streams meet in the center. Is Bang. that something that's well known? No. Okay. No. These are all secrets of the Druid. But hang uh -huh. out there. You figure it out. Why, yeah. why, why? And, you know, the people there, they don't have clean cars or clean houses. And they welcome spider webs in the kitchen. I'm like, Doo -hoo! you know, me and my clean car. <laughs> I mean, I'm, not, I'm exaggerating because I drive a Jeep and it's not exactly spanky spotless. But a lot of people do. Mm -hmm. And uh, in England, they don't. It's a feature. Their energy goes more in their gardens and um, their wildlife or their their uh, 
things they can eat from chicken and pig and you know, I think they're more right. of the earth is what I'm saying than they're more connected. Yeah. 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 It's a very, very different, I'm gonna say the word frequency again. Yeah. So what we have with crop circles are some of them are are E T infused. And to me that would be like if they were flying over and they needed a star map to go left here, you know, 40 degrees north, they're going to lay down these orbit things, you know, and kind of show these schematic of the uh, planetary whatever, if this is the intention of that crop circle that's being created by the Earth and perhaps other dimensional beings. And again, this is just my perception, but I think those are the ones that are really buzzy. And you look at them and they're like, wow, it looks like planets. It's like, "Uh uh-huh, that's right. And so some of them, I think, are star maps. Some of them now we know are, you spin them, whoa, they're advanced propulsion technologies. Lots of them are spinning crop circles, are your visibles of what they're showing us. Sitting still is how to build it. So, oh, wow. so cool. And I think uh, when I did my talks, I was a speaker at most of the UFO events in America and Canada the last three years. Mm-hmm. The people that don't like me, unfortunately, started sponsoring those events. These are my distributors. It's been a very oh, wow. bizarre relationship. And um, they really don't like uh, me. <laughs> and so... Um, Short of that, though, I get thank you letters every day. I mean, for me, it's really about the people. It's about our evolution. But I really have triggered those that don't want the data getting out. And they're just shoving out these people packed with misinformation. And that's what's been going on in the whole UFO field for how long? You know, and these people are the ones being paid. Their photos are on every poster at every big event. And now it's going very dark. Yeah. It's going very, very yes, it is. different frequency. So I'm really glad I did three years of being out there and telling them the truth about what I've seen in the fields rather than what I've read in books and then regurgitated a bunch of misinformation. So back to this exciting data with Levin, Good, and Penny and how we can use it because that's what's yes. important. They re-engineered. They figured out how to re-engineer these spinning frequencies in the lab, and that's what we need to do. And the final discovery was that with all these magnets and this and that, you know, with how far it threw the material, they could tell that it was actually two counter-rotating vortices and that it was actually plasma spinning in the middle of crop circles in counter-rotating directions. So, 2010, I go into a crop circle with my last beautiful man uh, that I was with. And uh, I took him for two years to the crop circles and he thought that I was making it up how these movies happen. Like it's not my fault that I make movies. I mean, they just throw it at us. And by the, by the end of the orbs movie, uh, he was speechless. He was absolutely speechless. And this was at the end of a summer where I said, leave the camera home. Believe me, please leave the camera home. I don't (laughs) want to make a movie. Oh, but it's such a cool camera. I'm like, no, you don't understand. Me, Patty Greer, if I carry a camera over there, they will make me make a movie. Oh, honey, you're so cute. It's like, this isn't, I'm serious. He sneaks the camera in the car. (laughs) Didn't take you seriously, I take it. I don't think people have any idea about contact. I think that people don't realize that it really is real. It really does happen. Well, if they don't experience it for themselves, it's kind of one of those things that um, I think you have to have it close to you in your life to really fully accept and understand it. You know, For, for people, it's so foreign and I think somewhat scary for people who, you know, have never had it and and don't really know what to expect and, you know, have never really been close with someone who's had it. And so, you know, it's hard for people to to really um, accept that as their reality. But if he took the camera, it's because it was meant to be. And you know that. You know it was meant to happen. Um, That was as, you know, if you were resisting it, it was being forced on you in that way by him taking it because it had to happen. And so you were kind of resisting your path. So... The universe just said, hey, look, it's coming. <laughs> you're you're going to make the film. <laughs> Girl, you're in it. We're going to hand it to you. Just have fun. Mm-hmm. 
Yeah. yeah. Well, what I filmed, the punchline of that movie, my fifth movie, it's called Orbs and Light Beings. Uh, that particular one, I took my boyfriend to the research center. It was a beautiful morning. And the research center was this great place where you can get coffee and cakes. And all the researchers from around the world would come and meet there. It's called the Silent Circle. And so... Um, we get there at like eight or nine in the morning, have coffee and sit out and whisper to other researchers, do you know where there's a new crop circle? And we kind of trade um, locations and stories. And it was pretty darn fun. And uh, I'd sell my movies there. People had their books there. And so it was like a, a, a meeting place, but it was also an information place. And it was very important. Um, what's happened? is that um, I'm probably the only one in America that's continued to be highly passionate about sharing the information, but I'm also the only one presenting Love and Good's works uh, with Penny, honestly and um, fully. I, I think so, you've got Barbara Lamb also. who she's, she, she's always, she does a bit with crop circles, but that's not her primary thing. Um, have you ever have you ever um, met with Barbara when you get you know when you were doing crop circle stuff because she's done a lot with them as well. Barbara's in five of my eight movies, maybe. Six. <laughs> okay, so you six. definitely. Yeah, Barbara yeah. is my closest crappie friend, and um, my favorite Barbara story. Barbara Lamb is magnificent. Uh, you know, I've been in. More I love than her. 100. Yeah. Barbara Lamb has been in more than two thousand crop circles. Wow. <laughs> I kid you not. She, 2000. And wow. she's humble about it. So I know she is. She's amazing. You know, what was an awful thing was uh, she was on the show, but she was having problems with her computer that day. And um, her audio was so low and it had so much of an echo that we weren't able to archive her show, which was so horrible. Um, so I'll probably have to have her back at some point. Um, but she's amazing. Uh, she's she's got so much amazing information. Um, yes. Yeah, I can't I can't say enough about her. I just adore her. <laughs> well, she's my dearest friend, and you know we're grown up girls, and we share a B and B room. We did all those years oh. I went. We would meet uh, a few days up three three days before her tour groups would come. I'm always too selfish to do a tour group. That was silly of me. I could make a fortune, right? But I, <laughs> I need to lay and listen. I, for me, my work was communicating with the circle makers. It wasn't bringing people in. Right. Barbara Lamb was very generous with her time, and she loved it. So um, we would meet three days before her tour group would show up, and she and I would go and just be in all the crop circles. So she'd pick the ones to take her group in, mm -hmm. and uh, basically we'd get our paws warmed up. And um, so we get up one morning at this B&B &B on Honey Street, and the lady is serving us coffee and clotted cream. You know that stuff, Mark. I'm like, <laughs> clotted? What? Well, that just doesn't sound right. But uh, Yep. <laughs> right? So I, I need cream in my coffee. So she's serving us this beautiful cup of coffee in lovely china. And she says to me and Barbara at Crack of Dawn, Oh, there's a new crop circle right across the street at the farm. And we're like, what? Yeah, last night when you slept, a new crop circle showed up right across the street. I don't know if we splashed the coffee on her when we jumped up. Barbara and I, like, flew out the screen door. I don't <laughs> even hardly remember leaving. We were, like, two teenage girls. The woman was oh. like, coffee! And we were gone. <laughs> it was hysterical watching. I mean, across the street, give me a break. That's a little close. Wow. While yeah. we slept. So we run across the street and there's this big gate and I'm looking around and I mean, I looked left, I looked right and Barbara was on the other side of this big gate. I'm oh. like, how the heck did How'd you, you get there? there? How did you do? I don't, you know, there's a part of her. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's all yeah. I'm going to say. <laughs> I, I don't know how she got through. Oops that gate but she was on the other side and i was like oh crap i've got work to do to get my body over there wow. it was, yeah i i still don't know how she did it but she is um uh, very very delightful and mm -hmm. speak the same language which is um borderless and i think we all need to be there because we've got a lot of people to wake up right now quickly we really do yeah definitely so
Have you had contact, both of you? Um, I have. <laughs> My whole family has. As a matter of fact, when you were talking about, and we'll, we'll talk about this when we come back from the break, because we're getting ready to go to break in about a minute. Um, but um, the book about orbs and, and light beings, um, my children and I have all had experiences. Um, kids more so with the orbs, um, also with the light beings. So yeah, we've, I'm going to have to watch that film because that one has definitely piqued my curiosity. So um, when you mentioned it, you know, I, I didn't want to break you off or cut you off or anything, but we've definitely had a lot of experiences with various things like that. And Mark, I don't know, um, ha- Mark's, Mark's had some UFO experiences, I know. Well, I yeah. think it'd be fun to hear about. Yeah. <laughs> um, yes, I would say I have been told, I have been given some sort of message. Um, I don't know if that applies as contact, but... Uh... I would think so. Um, I, I would think so. So, okay, we're getting ready to go to commercial. I don't want to cut us off in the middle of, uh, in the middle of a story. So... We are speaking with Patty Greer, who is a UFO filmmaker. And Patty, if you want to give some information about your um, your website and where people can find your films before we go to break, and that'll kind of take us into it. Absolutely. There's beautiful photos of crop circles on every page of my website, pattygreer.net, P-A-T-T-Y-G-R-E-E-R.net. We will be back after this break. Welcome back, everyone. Uh, I just want to take a quick minute to um, remind everybody out there listening that Revolution Radio is 100% listener supported. Um, This station relies 100% um, to cover all of our costs as donations from our listeners. So if you guys are enjoying the show, if you're enjoying uh, hearing all about Crop Circles with Patty, if you enjoy all the other shows on Revolution Radio, Please take a minute when you're visiting the website at freedomslips.com and click on the donate button, click on the support button. Um, There's also uh, a store where you can buy things that are radio uh, related and also there are seed packs that you can get. Um, All of these things help go towards um, helping the costs for the uh, station, which is enormous. And uh, we're actually getting close to our goal this 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 month so um just a little bit would help so you know if you got a you know five dollars burning a hole in your pocket instead of going and getting a happy meal at mcdonald's and poisoning your body um stop by and give a donation to the people who give you entertainment um and with that said i would like to welcome back uh mark hello Thank mark you. My stomach is still reeling from my last McDonald's a couple of days ago. <laughs> and I'd also like to welcome back our special guest tonight, Patty Greer. Patty. Thank you. Yes. Nice to be here. So now, uh, before the break, we were starting to talk about um, Mark's contact experiences. And so, um, yeah, tell us a little bit about that, Mark. The message you were mentioning. The message. The message. No, well, uh, I will start by saying um, I unequivocally feel the universe does speak to us at points. Definitely it does to me on occasion. Although I've kind of sidelined that, that sort of feeling comes from things like the UFO experiences I've had. Uh, I mean, you know, I I don't really like going into detail about it, but it's the, the point is that I've seen things that I believe are beyond explanation Normally, and all that has led into, you know, interest that I've always had in crop circles and things, living right next to Wiltshire and Avery area and on a crop field, you know, waiting. When when will one happen in the field behind my house? And it never did. But uh, and all that seems linked to my experiences with UFOs and things like that. And it all feels connected. Um, I wouldn't say it just feels. I feel I know it is connected. So, uh yeah. Maybe uh, we just need what... to have Patty and Barbara like visit across the road from you and then you'll get you'll get a crop <laughs> well, circle this is the thing. They've and kudos kudos to you, Patty. You guys have real gumption. I mean, I, I live near the place and 
you know, I feel a connection with this stuff and that stuff, but I, you know, I, I haven't even gone out and really investigated it beyond sort of a, a brief visit here and there. You put some real time and learned some real stuff from it. And it's very impressive. Thank you. Yeah, I did take a lot of time. Nine weeks at a B and B is a wow. commitment. Yeah, definitely so. And um, hauling my gear around, crap. I mean, it's heavy. I bet. I'm just a little girl, and it's like as big <laughs> as me, tripod. I mean, it's just like, oh, God, so much stuff to haul around. Small price, though, because then it lasts forever. These experiences yeah. can be documented. So the Barbara Lamb day when she and I awoke and a crop circle happened right across the street. Yeah. When we saw the photos from the air, it was the goddess in a circle, crop circle. Oh, wow. Really? And I was very excited to be doing that crop circle with Barbara Lamb on that very morning. It felt honoring of, um, I felt almost like we were two crop circle mothers and now I meet Penny Kelly, and it's almost like we're um, hitting it on a different level. But I, I find it interesting that it is the women that are going to bring it. I think in a lot yes. of fields, with all due respect, Mark, I think that the um, what I'm tolerating, and again, I'm going to speak for um, what I've heard people say to me, why I am so severely hacked, and... Um, is that, number one, I tell the truth, but the bigger number one is that I'm a woman. So mm. that's what I said to this top military guy. I said, I'm a woman, and I tell the truth. And he said, yeah, you're missing the big one. And I said, what's the big one? And he goes, you're believable. There you go. So what it is with women, and my seventh movie is called Women of Today, I wasn't going to make a women's movie, but I hauled my camera to this big <laughs> event I spoke at for two years uh, called Contact in the Desert. Last year, we had 3,500 oh, yeah. 3, people. I did my world premiere of Crop Circle Diaries. I did a big lecture on crop circles. And then I did a workshop on orbs and light beings. Uh -huh. And so I did this, uh, you know ridiculous photo collection from a woman in Australia who lives on a vortex and she's taken more than 800,000 photos with 11 different cameras morning noon night flash on flash off get over the lens flare thing these are absolutely incredible photos every day she sent me 50 I could hardly wow. sleep couldn't wait to get up and see 50 more. She just flooded me after she saw my movie. She was like, oh, yes, yes, I'll work with you. Again, the women were just like flooding. Mm -hmm. We're really just trying to flood the world with this correct information. And there's this wall of secrecy that's not women. I can tell you it's not women doing yeah. this. Woman. I know. I know. You well, know, and here here goes even beyond that. It's not even just the women, but it's the, oh, what is Truth tellers. The right, yes, exactly. The right women are being drawn together. I've found this over time that people who are meant to be a part of each other's journey are drawn together naturally. Mm -hmm. And our journeys walk hand in hand for a reason because we are meant to assist each other so that we can assist others in their journeys. And by coming together, by pooling all of our resources together, we do so much more and we are so much more effective and, and our reach is much stronger and goes wider. And we also help, um, I guess, just expand out the journey of each other just by being together. Um, I, it's hard to explain, but it's kind of something that just naturally happens. And you'll notice it more and more over time as more people enter your life. Um, it's like they were meant to be there and you know they were meant to be there and everything just kind of pulled together so that your lives intertwined. Yes, it is perfection, isn't it? It is, yeah. And women talk like this. Mark's like, yeah, you girls, go on, whatever. <laughs> yep. <laughs> right? No, that's fine. It's uh, you, 
if you guys want and can go down the rabbit hole, that's great. I, you know, I, I believe it could be done, could go down the rabbit hole and probably find some answers that I would want to find. But as you say, may, maybe uh, you're the better conduits for that women. Women are better conduits for that sort of thing. If that makes sense. This is the feminine energy, perhaps. Um, I don't know. But yeah, I, I do notice that, although there are definitely men who um, can be very spiritual conduits. Um, it definitely happens. Um, but I, I think it also has to do with the, they, they also allow their female energy to come through a little bit more also, which helps channel that. It's a beautiful balance. Yeah. It's, it's that divine energy. It doesn't need to be masculine or feminine. It's just True. being in your higher self. <clears throat> and I think that's the work right now. I think that very soon everybody is going to have to pick white or black and there won't be a gray. There won't be a, a middle, a variety of colors. I think very soon everybody is going to need to step into full integrity because the transparency is going to be a lot more noticeable. Mm -hmm. I really think that energetically, and I'm talking back to frequencies and um, plasma more than um, anything else, I think we're starting to understand these real sciences that have been hidden because they are going to replace the present systems. This is what I'm up against um, and what a lot of, uh, perha perhaps the other one I will uh, compare myself to is my friend Del Bigtree who did the movie Vaxxed. Okay, yeah. The vaccines. Mm -hmm. Have you uh, heard about this movie or seen it? I've heard of it. I have not seen it, but I'm, I'm not a, I'm, I'm an anti-vaxxer, um, because just all of the data about it, um, I, I, yeah, <laughs> I'm, I'm not pro-vax at all. <laughs> well, they had such heavy data that, um, they're actually trying to make the movie illegal in California mm -hmm. to even promote it. I mean, these, Groups of small-minded, scared people of evolution, unfortunately, are extremely well-funded. And um, hopefully they're going to be given the choice very soon and they're going to decide to stay here rather than um, be removed energetically on many, many levels. Um, I think everybody's going to be brought to their truth very soon. And I'm not talking about anything the least bit religious. It's just a transparency of have integrity or, or leave. Yeah. It's just been too much, too long for the mother to tolerate. And I do believe that we've already talked about something very surprising, that crop circles are coming out of the earth from the mother. Mm -hmm. Occasionally, often, yes, uh, ETs are involved. Occasionally, often. Human consciousness is involved, but not always. But the mother is. So when we see these balls of light that we think, well, wait a minute, they're coming out of the sky. Mm, yeah, maybe. Or maybe they spin up out of the earth, but we don't see them until right. they're spinning at the right frequency to turn into a ball of light, light, which is what humans see. What you're looking at is actually a spinning ball of plasma frequencies. And perhaps it doesn't light up until it gets to the right frequency <clears throat> that the third dimensional human can actually see and focus on. That's that's very, very interesting. Um, and that makes perfect sense. And that um, that is kind of related to your orbs and light beings. I take it film somewhat. Yeah, we'll check this out. So we're sitting at the research center mm -hmm. early in the morning having coffee, and we see these two guys pull up and fall out of their van. They each fell out a different door. And my boyfriend and I were like, "What did, did I just see that? And they <laughs> barely got up, and they kind of like dragged themselves to the research center. And we're cracking jokes like booze, hang hangover, right. drugs. Like, what do you think? And uh, we weren't giving them the respect they deserve, perhaps, because... Um, took a few more minutes and they weren't doing well. So I, being a woman, a mother, got up and kind of stepped over and said, are you okay? And one guy barely looked up and he said, oh, what we saw last night. <laughs> oh. I'm like, well, 
do come sit with us. Honey, please yeah. bring a coffee. So we grabbed him a couple coffees. And the other guy, Andy, just sat there with his elbows on his knees, didn't speak much English. They were from Belgium. And um, Igor spoke very good English. And he just kept saying, my eyes don't lie. Oh, God, what a line. Right. My eyes don't lie. It's just my rational mind tries to find a rational explanation. Yeah. So what they saw was balls of light come out of the sky and they were bright orange and then they disappeared. And then wow. they appeared again. <sighs> and then they disappeared. And they're describing this very interesting interaction visibly with being able to see they were orange and there was a white one up there and they weren't creating a crop circle. These were just balls of light that were over the field that would appear and disappear while these guys were watching. He said all of a sudden one of them started to turn and a doorway in the ball of light opened and illumined light beings with arms, legs, and a head came out. Oh, wow. He said, um, I'll tell you a really heavy story. This is in Crop Circle Diaries. It's one of my really heavy stories. So they saw these, these uh, illumined light beings come out of these balls of light. And the photos that my friend and I had of the same location two years earlier are these bright orange balls of light with a doorway open. I mean, we had the photos. Oh, wow. And I've seen clearer or white ones on NASA's website where you can see the doorway open. It just looks almost like a, um, what do you call those things? Uh, oh, God. It used to be like a cartoon where it looked like it was a little round thing and it would go around like I'm going to eat something. Um, oh, right. Yeah. yeah. I know what you're talking about. So it's just this like a long elongated U shape. You know, in these white orbs that NASA has photos of, but mine happen to be orange, and it's a very clear slot of openness, which is um, a doorway. Are you thinking Pac-Man? Thank you. Yes. Man. Well, actually, that well, it was in my head, but Mark actually typed it. So. Yes. Thank you. It was a Pac-Man looking shape, and so what it what it learned it turned out to be is the doorway. Wow. So I'm listening to these guys, and it was just a mind-boggling story. But um, everywhere my boyfriend and I went for the next 24 hours, everybody we met was in that field on that day or night, and saw uh, it had to be night because they saw the orange balls of light and had a telepathic interaction. I mean, we drove 50 miles away. I met a family at a completely different crop circle. They were also from Belgium. Mother, father, three kids. One one of the kids could not walk. His wheelchair had um, Grateful Dead art all around the wheels. <laughs> and the big dog to help him with his... Um, uh, he had, you know, the way to get him crutches to get into the crop oh, circle. Right. I mean, that's a determined family. Yeah. Beautiful little girl with long ringlets and a big split in the middle of her teeth. And so the family sits down to go on camera for me. The mother says, I will translate for you. So there's this darling family with a big dog, and the the mother says to the kids she wants to know what you think of this crop circle we're in, and what do you feel? And the little girl just starts talking, and I'm filming her speaking in Dutch really enthusiastically, big blue eyes, probably five years old, so she doesn't Aww. know how to mislead yet. All she knows yeah. is what she's experiencing, pretty much talking like me. But she's going on and on and on. And finally, the mother looks at the camera and she says, she doesn't want to talk about this crop circle. She wants to talk about the one that we were in the other night in East Field where she saw the orange balls of light. Oh, wow. And they told her the crop circle wasn't done yet. They're going to make it bigger. Oh. My boyfriend just about fell over because <sighs> we had already met Igor that morning who had seen the orange balls of light and they communicated with him mm -hmm. telepathically. So the next day we drive another 50 miles to, um, 
uh, Glastonbury, England. And we went to this wedding. And at the end of the wedding, we all went out to dinner. And we meet Eddie from Holland at the end of the table. And I said to Eddie, what do you do? And he says, oh, I do automatic writing. I said, what does that mean? He said, I close my eyes and spirit takes my hand and writes. Mm -hmm. And I write these amazing messages. And I was like, really? What have you written? Anything interesting lately? He said, yeah, yeah. And he pulls out of his pocket his book and he flaps it open on the table. And I recognize it. It's that dang same crop circle that all the other people had oh. talked about. Igor, the kid, and now Eddie. Wow. And after we interviewed Igor, he said, yeah, yeah. I heard these French people coming up the hill. And as soon as Igor and Andy left... As they were walking out away from the Crop Circle Research Center, they said, oh, that's the French people over there. So the second group shows up. So by time we meet Eddie, he flaps it open his book. And I was like, oh, my God, my boyfriend is definitely going to freak out because <laughs> this is four groups of people in yeah. totally different places that are going to say. So Eddie says, yeah, yeah. The other night I was in Eastfield and Mike and I are like nodding, slowly going, uh-huh, we know that Crop Circle. And he said, yeah, yeah. And so they wrote very fast, very big. And the word was orange. He goes, so I asked them, are you the orange beings? And they wrote, yes, very smooth, very strong. And there it is right in front of us. And then I asked them all these questions. And so he's got this beautiful accent on camera. No, I mean, we were at a restaurant at, a, at the wedding. He says, yeah, yeah. And they told me the crop circle's not done yet. They're going to make it bigger. <laughs> wow. The child had said that like same thing all the way, same words. Oh my God, my boyfriend stepped on my foot so hard. <laughs> I thought they were going to be bruised or dead. Oh no. He was so freaked out. Like, mm. and I just looked at him and whispered, Do you remember when I told you not to bring the camera? Mm-hmm. <laughs> so um, it really is true that I don't make this stuff up and that the movies happen through me. Yeah. Uh, Eight movies is a lot for one little girl to do in 10 years. Um, and um, so it's been a very interesting journey of tug of war with being so free to share, but seeing such suppression of such great yeah. works, Lefty, Levin Good, and then this disgusting bad actions of these rich people just doing everything they can to try and... Um, hurt my business is a polite way to say it. Yeah. And um, in 2013, my, their first message was fascinating. It was when I had my first show on PBS with Crop Circle Update, mm -hmm. the wake-up call. And that one won all of these awards. I entered it in film festivals, and it won Best Film and Best Music at the International UFO Congress Convention, which was a great honor, and the film just exploded. So I got it on PBS, and instantly my website was hacked. They oh. wouldn't let anybody buy the film from me. And it took me forever. It took three different people to get the hacking to stop on the website. But they actually created a page for everybody that went to the website that was a message placed on a crop circle that used to be my store. And it said, telling the truth in times of universal deceit is a revolutionary act. Hmm. And the quotes were opposite directions of what they should have been, both on the outsides of the statement. And George Orwell was down below, and they pretty much slaughtered his statement. And you know, but it, that was 2013. So this is a long haul of dragging crap on the bottom of my shoe. <laughs> yeah, doesn't mean I'm going to stop. This is a time where we need to clean up this planet and stop acting like pigs. Mm -hmm. And even if pigs are chasing the shit on my shoes, excuse my language on the radio, that's all I feel it is. All this suppression and people acting badly, it's, it's like something you stepped in. Whereas yeah. we're continuing to move forward, we don't have time to waste. No. We no. don't. So crop circles, with all this physical evidence, they are the one ufology piece where we have physical evidence. We have blown, bent, and expulsion nodes. We've got physical, biophysical changes in the plant. And when you look at a stalk of corn, oh, my God, now that 
is going to take some heavy frequencies to knock down half an acre of corn, yeah. turn these left, these right, these 30%. I mean, you know how thick corn is when it's growing the stalk. Mm -hmm. That's a big thing. Yeah. So when they realize that they get the water, the liquid to boil inside the plant, and plants are um, actually plastic. Plants are actually the same... Um, uh, what do they call it? Silicon. No, it's mm -hmm. uh, my brain is cramping again. This Cell is cellulose. Or cellulose. Yeah. Thank you. That all plants are cellulose and cellulose is plastic. So what they're getting, it's so hot. How does it not burn down the field? It is a magical force that's doing this. So I think that my very first movie at the end of it, we, um, I had no idea what I was doing other than I hired a team to film me and my friends in the crop circles because I'd been laying in them for nine weeks that summer <laughs> and I knew everyone that I was speaking at the big event. So there I am at the big event, this great film crew of nice guys was there and I said, could I pay you for a day to come and film me and most of these people over in the crop circles? So that was my accidental first movie. I bring it home. I hire a kid on Craigslist as an editor, and we lay out this amazing movie of what it's like to be in the crop circles and the real croppies. I mean, the people that are laying in them day after day after right. day, dissecting the photos. I watched a guy walk around physically and sketch out the most incredibly ornate crop circle on the ground. I don't know how he did it. Wow. I mean, it had so many different elements and shapes, and he just walked around and kept sketching the shape he was in, and wow. Yeah, and from the air, I saw the air shot because somebody flew over and then came and did, you know, wanted to see it on the on the ground, and they had the showed us the photos, and the, the guy had it down. Wow. I couldn't do such a thing. So it is two different levels of looking at them from the air to focus on what is the message, or being in the field and being in the literally in the field of these advanced enhanced frequencies of all this plasma that's spinning. So when I met Stephen Greer in 2010 in the middle of a crop circle, this beautiful, it looked from the air like a 3D diamond shape coming out of like a cube coming out of a big labyrinth. I don't know oh. if you remember that one. Oh mm. God, no matter where the airplane turned in the circle, no matter what photo I shot, they were all like 3D where that two, uh, cube was up out of the circle. But of course it was just flat, dry, brown wheat. It, magnificent formation. Wow. So on the ground, I walked to the center with the same boyfriend in uh, 2010. And we, uh, I always go to the center to film. I set up my camera near the middle and I do full circle. But Stephen Greer and 20 people that paid him a lot to be there were <laughs> sitting in the whole center. And I came in and I was like, oh, man, I'm going to have to wait, you know. And he looked at me and I said, hi, Stephen, I'm Patty Greer. And he goes, Patty. And we'd never met. What a great place to meet. So he opens his arms. So, of course, I had to walk around all these people and got a nice hug. And it was a great way to meet him. And in that moment, he walks into the middle of the crop circle and he's holding two compasses. One is pointing left to the north and the other is pointing right to the north. So we've got two counter-rotating frequencies oh, wow. in the middle of a crop circle. And I'm going, oh, my God, Levin Good was right. Wow. Right? Right? I mean, just in your face. That's like hard evidence right hard there. Hard evidence. I mean, yeah. we have so much absolute physical evidence that is pretty well undeniable. And the fascinating thing about going and seeing how many places... My movies are being sold by thieves. Nobody is selling Crop Circle Diaries because that's the one they don't want to get out. And <laughs> it's so important. It is the reason probably that I made all the other films. So I want everybody in your audience and you guys to watch Crop Circle Diaries very soon. It is so explan ex explanatory about... Um, what actually happened to William Levengood, how he didn't get his PhD, how they twisted the story so that people would actually blackball him in the scientific community. I mean, it is so, it's kind of like Julian Assange. 
or the Manning oh, guy. Goodness, I hope he's okay. <laughs> or any of these great people doing amazing things. Yes. And my favorite thing Julian has ever said, which I said myself today, is if I'm lying, why are they I, spending so much to try and yeah. hush my word? Shut me up. Yeah. So I think, you know, what they don't realize about women and about truth tellers is that nothing you do matters. No matter how bad people act about lying and, oh, my God, I mean, I actually watched that uh, Hillary Trump thing the other night. Oh, did you? <laughs> people are laughing at us across the world. They're mm -hmm. wondering what happened to America. How can the people be this complacent? They're really questioning us because the rest of the world is not as complacent as America. We we really are owned by... It frustrates me. It yeah. frustrates me personally um, because everybody has bought into the two-party illusion so strongly that they honestly have convinced themselves that if they vote for anybody other than the two major parties, that their vote is wasted. And they believe this fervently. And, and that that's what's so distressing is because... If you don't wake up, if you don't take a stand against it, if you don't do something different, um, it's never going to change. You have to stand up. You have to show your voice or your voice will never matter. You mm -hmm. have to make that change. I'm personally, I'm, I'm behind Jill Stein in this one. Uh, she's She's got my vote. But, um, you know, whoever you decide to vote, even if you write someone in, it's better than choosing someone who's just the lesser of two evils. Because they're both corrupt. Isn't it sad that that's what the rest of the world is seeing as yeah. representing America right now? It is embarrassing. And it you is. know what's surprising was in 2007, 2008, when I was going over to England, people actually said to me that liked me very much, don't admit you're American. Tell people you're Canadian. And I would always be taken aback, like, well, number one, I won't lie. But number two, Why? And they said, you guys have a bad rep. That Bush guy, whoa, they just think mm -hmm. you guys are just losing your marbles. And now, you know, so it's an interesting time where we've actually lost the respect of the world. And the circus that just went on the other night, I mean, you've got two grown-ups yelling and calling each other nasty. I mean, that was, it's, it's what it is. But I do think that uh, my vote would be, I don't think there's going to be an election and if we can pull this off, mm. where there is no election of which, uh, yeah. you say the lesser of which evil, um, I really do think that we're about to see the rise of an entirely new government that is not corrupt and a huge shift in the entire financial system across the world of balanced reality. I would love to see that. Huge I would love to see that. Reset. Nasara, Jasara. I really think these things are far more real than the matrix we've had shoved down our throats. And my focus is there. So no matter what goes on in the world, no matter what my friends tell me is going on, right. that's just so awful. Um, I always say, you know what? See ahead and see how good it's about to be. And yeah. maybe I'm out of my mind, but I don't think so. I'm voting for really good. <laughs> Me too. Um, actually, you know, I'm foreseeing this change too. There's been a need for just a massive shift in the way our country is run for a long time. The Electoral College should have been completely eliminated long ago. We don't need it anymore. It's not part of the system that we need. We're not there anymore. We're not in that situation where we still need that. And, and that is... Part of where all the corruption remains is through that electoral college, but it's also in the way um, the system is set up, the election system, in, in what they allow as far as fundraising and campaign fundraising and, and, you know, all the money that they get from, you know, big oil companies and stuff. And it's not just in the presidential running, it's also in Congress and in, in Senate, you know, um, they're able to take money from these big companies and then they vote for these big companies. We have to stop that. We have to make it illegal for our representatives to take money from corporations. It shouldn't be allowed. Lobbying shouldn't be allowed. And 
I think if we can get rid of those kinds of things, we will have people in our government who are actually there because they want to serve the people and not because they're in it for whatever, you know, slush fund money they can get. I agree. Yeah. Yeah, we're in a time that uh, is the end of the old and the beginning beginning of the new. Now, I'm curious. I'm curious real quick. The shift has hit the fan. Mm. Tell me a little bit about that one. (laughs) The shift has hit the fan is a movie that I filmed at an event called Breakthrough Energy Movement Conference. Mm hmm. And there were some of the greatest minds there all in one place, which is um, where I like to be. And so I filmed uh, Foster Gamble of Thrive. I filmed Sasha Stone of New Earth Nation. I filmed um, uh, the John Cyril free energy device called the Cyril Effect Generator. And he had it moving and he explained it beautifully. And... um, there was two other guys that had 3D printers. One of them was this character with long hair and a funky hat. <laughs> and he just picked up bits and parts from a junkyard here and a junkyard there. And he stuck all this stuff together and he put he created a 3D printer. Wow. You've got a lot of these indigo kids and crystal children that don't need much training. Nope. We, on the other hand, as you know, elders and adults have to be taken and um, downloaded or uploaded, whatever we choose to call it, and get receive a whole bunch of information at one time that then we need to recalibrate into our system. That's an interesting way to put it, but that's definitely... I've actually, I've actually referred to it that way um, myself before. That's actually... Uh, yeah, exactly. <laughs> that's exactly the way it came to me... Um, Remember we were talking about light beings earlier? Uh-huh. Okay. Um, my experience, well, my second experience with light beings um, was a situation where there was an information exchange. And, and it's really hard to explain because there was something that was kind of in front of me that was constantly shifting and changing. But I understood that there was an exchange of information happening during that process. And that was exactly, you know, when I went to refer it to someone and explain it, I, so, like it was being downloaded. And that was exactly the same term. So I, I found that really interesting that you use that term because that's kind of the way it came across to me as well. Download or upload? It was both, actually. <laughs> it was both. They were taking, they were giving me information, but they were taking some from me as well. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. They do Uh, find us fascinating. Yes. Well, I think that people that are having contact, number one, are blessed. Number two, I really do feel that what you put out, you get back. And I feel that with wildlife also that I have a lot of interaction with, which is that when I'm out in the woods where I live and I'm with somebody all of a sudden, an an animal that Mm -hmm. doesn't know me, Instead of approaching them, I step back and then I sense their breathing and I slow mine down to match theirs and then they have no fear of me. Nice. So I feel that when we can teach ourselves to listen rather than speak, we can accomplish a lot more. So when it comes to other dimensionals or other... Um, elementals, such as wildlife, such as animals, such as pets. You guys, if you have dogs or cats, you know how to communicate with them. Yeah. So um, that's that's a good step there. You know your pet, and you can do all this loving, amazing stuff, and you can see on their face. They feel it, and then they give it to you back. Well, that's how I am with foxes. I have had unbelievable numbers of different foxes in my life, but... I've got a timid one now, uh, but I always attract them for some reason, and I meet them energetically, and I'm only going through all this because I think it's the same as what we need to do with ETs. You know what's funny is you're talking about, you know, having the foxes around you, um, and that's kind of one of the aspects that it, 
makes perfect sense because one of the aspects of Fox Medicine is kind of blending into the background and just kind of watching from a distance and absorbing all the information without getting really involved with it. And that's, that really suits you really, really well. Oh, perfectly. That makes, that's make perfect sense that Fox Medicine is with you. Mm. It's been a long time with foxes and deer. I, um, when I get bored hand feeding them, I stick the apples in my teeth and they take it out of my <laughs> oh, mouth. Oh, wow. My kids were so scared watching me from the kitchen window. I would just say, just don't yell. Don't say anything. Yeah. I'd be out there with bucks with huge antlers and they just come right up like I was a tree. Oh, wow. That's amazing. <laughs> but again, it's because I invited them. Right. Desired it. And my energy was completely focused on yeah. them. So I think that I'm, again, what we need to do is prepare everybody for contact because yes. how we react to them is how they're going to react with us. Exactly. So um, if we can get rid of that fear and really be welcoming, we're going to get that back. Really quick, I want to uh, welcome Amy into our show. Amy, say hello. Hello. I am not sure how my sound is after the update. You're fine. You're actually fine. Yeah, you're good. Uh, Patty, Amy is actually going to be one of my co-hosts. And this is actually her first episode coming in. And she ended up uh, being late to party due to a little bit of a Windows 10 update. <laughs> Completely ah. unexpected. <laughs> yeah. And where so, are you at? I'm actually in Pennsylvania. And where are you, Lenita? I'm in Oklahoma. And I'm in Boulder, Colorado. And where are you, Mark? Oxford, England. Oh, that's right. Mm -hmm. Well, how exciting. We have an international show. Yes. I'm also working with New Earth Nation. I'm proud to say I'm one of their teachers of the New Earth Academy. And Sasha Stone has created this years ago, but they are going to be sustainable communities there's already a beautiful one built in bali that just opened in the last oh. few weeks but again they're about free energy advanced technologies you know growing all their own food being self-sustaining and what we're trying to do you with your show all of you with your work mm -hmm. is we're trying to bring everybody into a new way of living together yes. peacefully yes. and i'm so grateful for you doing all these shows because it's your job to get the information out. Yeah. We count I, on you. I've, I've, I've mentioned this many, many times, but I see Anomalous Realities, my show, as an extension of my shamanic work as a healer, as someone who is there to help people on their journeys. Um, it's, it's one of the methods that I use to help others in different ways with their journey and their consciousness. Um, it's just, it's just a natural part of it. And, it comes naturally to me and it was just kind of, you know how when um, you're called, you know, how when you're called to do something, you don't really, um, you don't really make the conscious decision. It just kind of falls into place. That's kind of what happened with this. So, yeah. Lovely. When yeah. you're lucky. <laughs> when you're lucky. Yeah. Yeah. Oh. When you have something that you're meant to do, though, it, it kind of, it, it only doesn't work out if you're resisting it a lot and that's usually um most healers um if they resist their calling to become a healer that, that's when they're that's when the sickness comes and it won't start to get better until they start to accept their path and start going on it mm -hmm. yeah well i think it's never been more important to command with love that you yourself choose where you're going to put your thoughts i know that with what i'm tolerating with these little stupid bullies mm -hmm. that i really have to keep myself in a very positive place, place mm -hmm. and not let it really shift me one way or another except just to say wow this must be really important what i'm doing what yeah. i'm sharing and it is it's it's it vitally is. important um I'm always drawn to people that have a message that I feel the world needs to hear, the world needs to know. 
And yours is a very important message. It's why I really want people to buy your movies, listen to what you've got to say, look at the evidence, and pay attention to what's being said. Well, thank you for the support. And um, I'm definitely doing probably the only one who's privy to Eleven Good's real work. And I keep mentioning him because it is astounding, the things that they found. They were also given little pieces of the Roswell ship at his lab. Oh, really? Oh, yeah. I mean, they... He analyzed it? Mm Mm-hmm. Yeah. What did he find with that? Um, I hope I don't blow it. I know it was bismuth and either manganese or, or, um, bismuth and manganese or business and, um, I think that's what it was. God, I hope I'm correct. But they found that it was two elements that definitely don't go together on earth. Hmm. I've heard that, um, but I didn't. Yeah, I didn't know who exactly did the research. Well, were there other people who did the research as well, or was he the lone person? I imagine many people um, okay. experimented with what was going on. But they um, they had things at the lab that were all different UFO evidence. They had um, landing sites. They found that if they tested the trees, that the rings on the trees near a landing site, all of a sudden had these big expanded rings until, like it showed year after year, you know, pretty consistent on most trees. But Mm -hmm. when they cut down the trees around the landing site, the sizes of the rings was completely different than all the others. I mean, it was just so noticeable um, that the biophysical evidence in all places ET uh, had changed physically their structure. Their atomic structure was reorganized, recalibrated. That's wild. Uh-huh. That's information that they don't generally make known either because it's it's pretty substantial evidence. Yeah, well, you know, when I said women of today, here's my movie, and I'm like, oh, yay, non-UFO. And then I realized, wait a minute, I've got three women working on the Mars mission in this film. Oh, the Mars mission. You know what? I wanted to bring that up because you were talking earlier about how, you know, you saw the the positive future and where we're going. Um, Do you think that this um, Mars mission, especially the one that uh, Elon Musk, he's wanting to colonize Mars. Do you think that that might have something to do with this positive future that we're seeing and that we're getting back the Earth and things are going to be going in a more positive way because the elites are the ones that are going to be heading to Mars. The tickets, you know, for Elon Musk's colonization are going to be like, you know, a couple million per ticket to Mars. Um, So we're going to be getting rid of all the powerful people. Um, In doing so, I think perhaps that's how that transition might might, uh, come about. What what are your thoughts on that? I don't think they're quite that lucky. I think they already got the choice of you're going to behave or we're going to remove you. (laughs) I don't think they're going to have the luxury. I think that um, I haven't really followed Elon's work. I think that there's an awful lot of men with an awful lot of money and an Mm -hmm. awful lot of bragging rights. And in Women of Today, I show this beautiful woman from Pakistan who her interview made me fall over in my chair because she said, I am the liaison between NASA and Boeing. We are building 15 space shuttles going to Mars, That will, 60 space shuttles going to Mars in the next 15 years. And there's photos of the shuttles, and there's photos of Shanaz Sony, beautiful woman, with a mm-hmm. shower cap on, checking the wiring of the shuttle in transition two. She's wow. been doing this job for years. Yeah. So you've got Elon with the big mouth and the bragging, and everybody's going, oh, Elon, Elon, money, money. And then <laughs> women doing the friggin' work, bear with me. But there you go. So there she is. She's in the lab. She knows what's going on. She's known for years. She is the one between these two major players, and innocent and humble as could be. You would never know meeting her. I also interviewed Laura Eisenhower. Or most people know who she is. Mm-hmm. Uh, she turned down her free ticket to the Mars mission. She uh, is the great granddaughter of the president, Dwight D. Eisenhower. Yes. 
And uh, she was the black sheep of the family. Way too honest, way too clear, way too pure hearted and mm -hmm. totally into the divine feminine and the history of humanity and cleaning everything up. Oh, man, she was a one way ticket to Mars waiting to happen for that family. Mm -hmm. So with all their influence, they got her booked. But she said, absolutely not. No. If this is going to be secretive, I'm not going. Mm -hmm. So... um she definitely put her foot down and didn't get taken, but they were hoping to get get her moving off the planet because she's doing some pretty important work. Um, I've done a lot of gigs with her in the last year, and I absolutely adore her. I worry about the influences around her because she's invited too many places where there are some bad people. Yeah. And now our whole field of ufology, where I was a speaker for years, is completely infiltrated with grossness. I mean, it is a different, different thing in just three years. That's, that's a shame. <laughs> that's I don't want to be even be at these events. It's, wow. um, yeah, I was very disappointed to see who's sponsoring them. Um, and Scientology had a booth. I'm just like, oh my God. Oh, wow. You know, and it used to be fabulous, but yeah. everything has been infiltrated and not in a good way. But we so, can't let it hold us back either. We still have to fight the good fight. Well, we are. Yeah. And um, it's about creating the new. It's not about continuing to fight with the old. It's about yeah. creating the new, bringing in the new conferences that are about free energy, advanced mm -hmm. technologies, truth yeah. about UFOs and crop circles. Get rid of that old crap. It doesn't even matter anymore. But that's where all the money is. That's what's difficult. So I'm really pushing for the currency reset and the... Um, I don't think it's possible they're going to be able to hold it back much longer. I do believe the 209 countries signed this uh, revaluation of currency around the world mm -hmm. a year ago. I think that we are really in for a wonderful treat and a big surprise, uh, all humans on Earth, that there's actually good in the world, and we are just about to step into it, all of us. That would be absolutely wonderful, especially if uh, the, the currency reset doesn't include the Rothschild family. <laughs> I think we're going to see very, very clever ways that they were gotten rid of. I really don't think we're going to need to be reading Facebook. I call it face plant um, <laughs> stuff about them. I don't think their feature is going to be front page anymore. I think they're going to be dust. Good, good. I think the whole unillumined Nazi chapter is going to be dust. Good, good. The, that's you know that was one of the things we were talking about the Mars mission and it seems like they're putting so much effort into colonizing other areas um, I'm not interested in going to Mars because personally Earth is my mother Earth is my home and we need to be putting energy into fixing her up to healing the damage that's been done into focusing on a, how to stop hurting her mm -hmm. yeah and three more yeah and yeah. she is calling out through these beautiful divine messages of crop circles. Yes. And she is asking ETs to join her in these messages. She is asking the waters as she comes through water all the time. And she's reaching out to humans because these messages are for all of us. They're for the earth. They're yes. from the earth. They're for the waters and from the waters and us and all of the elementals and all of the other dimensionals. We're all in this together. And the thing about crop circles is it is all of us spun up in this magical gift of what we really are ultimately, which is frequency. Yes. We are just particles of thought. And um, when we come into Energy. physical, Form. It's so transient, and yeah. everything we do is clocked and documented. And the karma that we attract to us is really just a mirror image of something that we've drawn to ourselves before. But we're here to clean it up now. Yeah. I really think this is our time. And those of us doing this heavy work, which I imagine all of us on this call are doing, yeah. and a lot of your audience that's choosing conscious listening, um, we're moving it forward. Yes. And as long as we can get people to stop 
focusing on the Rothschilds or the pedophilia or just the horrific worst of the worst of the worst Mm -hmm. and see the best and see the new. See the beauty. Our energy on what we can be. And I'm talking to myself when I say this because the hacking, oh my God, Mm -hmm. eight items in Japan, who would be so low to steal my music? It's like... You know, oh, but that's not- another tool to try to draw your energy and your vibration down. You know, it's a, it's another method for them to try to draw your frequency down and keep it from being at that higher vibrational rate. And you know, we just have to keep doing what we do. I often, you know, when something like that happens, I go and I meditate and I just I pull all the light into me when I meditate to raise my vibration right back up again. Well, again. I think I'm just of an age where I could give a darn. (laughs) I do do care because financially it's just thieves and thieves and thieves. But it's really not about that. It's really more about disrespect, dishonor, and jealousy. You know, for me, I just, I I don't see a reason to compete or to have envy or to try and keep the world stupid. That's over. It's really time to move into the next. And that's what my work is about. And again, I want to say to your audience... My website is pattygreer.net, P-A-T-T-Y-G-R-E-E-R.net. I have eight movies, four soundtracks, and I've loaded everything into one box for half price so you can get it all in not all these boxes all over the place, but just one box where you turn pages and grab the next movie. But it is a crash course in ufology organic style, which means in the fields, on my back, in the airplanes. I mean, I, I can't even believe. Awesome. Thank you for being with us, Patty. Good night. Good night, everyone. Revolution Radio.